Hi there, in this screencast I'm going to show you how to animate uh, your sprite. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do um, to animate your sprite is you need to, uh, if you haven't done so already, you need to add all of the images for one complete uh, animation uh, loop of your sprite in motion. Now we're starting our sprites on the left edge of the screen, so you're going to want to find the images um, out on the F drive um, of your sprite facing in the east direction. So let me show you what those files will look like and how you can distinguish all of the ones facing the other directions. As I'm sure you may have noticed, um, there are just a ton of files. So I'm going to find on my hard drive where these are, but they are on um, the F drive under ICS and let's see, uh, I think sprites it, or under images. Let me find them here on mine. Yeah, I think uh, they're under uh, in a folder called maybe sprites. Um, okay, so if I'm looking at one of uh, the set of transparent PNG files, um, you'll notice that, that this letter right here uh, is either E, W, N, S, N, E, NW, SE, or SW, and those um, uh, indicate east, north, south, west, you know, etc., northeast, northwest, and so on. So you want to make sure you're picking the right motion pattern. So like for example here, I'm looking at the deer. Uh, I would probably want to do the deer running to the east. Okay, uh, and if you're using two different sprites, then obviously you'll need to import uh, the images from both. Now, if you do the Flappy Bird sprite, uh, the Flappy Bird animation sequence is extremely simple, being having an old school kind of design, pixelated design. So there are only three images of the Flappy Bird actually in motion, which you're going to cycle through. Okay. So, or which I'm going to cycle through. So I think I added those. No, I don't think I did yet. So what you need to do is we're going to change the uh, texture 2D uh, uh, variable into an array of texture 2D. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to turn that into an array. Uh, and I'm going to say... Uh, texture do D player textures. Okay, so that um, will immediately cause a bunch of errors because now that affects the code in the uh, load content method. So now I need, for me, I need three lines because my array is going to have three uh, elements. So I need to make the array. So far I just declared it. Now I'm going to actually make it. So I'm going to say player textures equals new player, oops, uh, player textures. No, I'm sorry, new texture 2D. That's right, texture 2D. And then mine has three, so I'm just going to do new texture 2D three. And now I need to assign one different texture that I've imported in content to each position in the array. So, so far we've done pretty much array of ints and other simple uh, variables in class, but you can actually make an array of texture 2D images. In fact, this is the, our main use of arrays in Xbox programming. So I'm going to have three assignment statements. You may have as many as 12 or 13, depending on how many images you have in your loop. And you can tell, of course, which I didn't go over, because those images begin with uh, the number 0000, and then go up through like 0012 or 0008 or something along those lines, depending on the sprite that you're using. So let's see, this needs to be a zero, no, S. And this also needs to be an S. And then player textures, 
this needs to be a 2 equals and then for the first one I'm gonna load bird 1 the second one I'm gonna load my bird 2 image and the third one I'm going to load my bird 3 image so I'm just gonna paste that and change it to bird 2 and change this to bird 3. Now you'll see why we're doing this in an array shortly. It will greatly shorten your code, especially if you have a um, sprite that has like 12 images in one animation loop for it flying or running or moving forward in some direction. Okay, so let's see. Player textures 2. I must have be missing something. Uh, oh, I put it, accidentally put an extra equal sign. I bumped the equals. Okay, so let's look at, uh, well, let's see where else we have. Uh, oh, okay. So now, what are we going to do in our uh, sprite, in our draw method? And how are we going to control, make the game cycle in between those images, just keep looping through those images over and over and over again when the game is running because that's what's going to give um, our sprite the appearance of it in some uh, animated motion. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two more int variables and I'm going to call them animation count one and animation count two. And those are going to go up, uh, you're going to declare those up where you declared all the other main variables in your game underneath the class statement, just somewhere where you declare the variables. It doesn't really matter within that section as long as you declare them one at one point. And I'm also going to, in the game one method, where it says public game one, which is right underneath where you declared all the variables. I'm also going to um, set those both equal to zero initially. So I'm going to say animation count one equals zero and animation count two equals zero. All right, so we're going to use those variables to cycle through the images. So every time the uh, update method increases or is executed, and remember whatever you put in the update method gets executed about 50 times a second. So every time the update method executes, we're going to update the value of animation count. So I'm going to say animation count one uh, equals, eh, let's see, uh, let's see if, uh, let me pause one second and see where I want to think about this. Okay, I changed my mind. It can really go either place in the update method or the draw method, but we're going to move it down to the draw method. Uh, it pretty much is associated specifically with um, drawing the uh, player, so you can uh, give a good reason why it should be in the draw method. So every time the draw, the draw method also gets up executed 50 times a second concurrently with the update method. So every time the update method executes, or the draw method executes, I'm going to increment animation count, the animation count by one. And then the maximum value I'm going to let animation count be is two. So I'm going to say if animation count equals three. So if it's as soon as it's instantly incremented up to three, we're going to set it back to zero. And what are we going to do then? We're going to increment animation count two. So I'm going to say animation count two plus plus, and then. Um, 
I'm going to say, I'm going to have another if statement and say if animation count to equals, let's say we don't want the, the bird's wings to going so fast that you can barely tell that they're moving and it's just a blur. So why don't we say, why don't we just have them change maybe five times a second? So five times a second would be, if we make that be 10, uh, let's see, uh, no, I'm sorry. Let's say if animation count one equals 10, that's where it should be. Um, so basically every 10th time, well, no, one more second. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to say if animation count 1 equals equals 10, then animation count 1 equals 0. And we're going to increment animation count 2 by 1. We're going to say if animation count 2 equals 3, that's where I should put 3, then what? Animation count 2 equals 0. And then I'm going to do two sets of closing curly brace. All right, so instead of this um, 10 value, I'm going to change that into a variable called animation speed. All right, so I'm going to go up, back up to the top, and right where I did animation count, I'm going to say int animation uh, speed. And you know what? This time I'm going to make what's called a final variable. It's a constant that can't, once you give it, it's like any other variable except once you give it a value, you can not, not change it anywhere else in your code. So I'm going to say in, in animation speed equals 10. And you'll see how this works in just a second and why I'm making this. So uh, let's see. Is it, I think it's final. Let me see if the final goes out front. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Let me just see sharp. Is it const? Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, in C sharp. In Java, it's final, but in C sharp, it's const is the keyword to make a constant. Okay, so let me go back down to the draw method right now. And I'm going to say where I said if animation count. 1 equals 10, I'm going to say animation count, or no, animation speed. And now, why, let's see, why is this, did I misspell animation count? Oh, I have an extra parenthesis. All right, so now, for each draw statement, instead of referencing a single texture, I say this. I say, I reference a position in the array. Now, the position that's going to be referenced is going to vary depending on what the value of animation count 2 is, which is constantly cycling between 0 and 3. So that way, when the draw method is firing, it looks to see what animation count 2 is when it's ready to draw, and it then draws the um, appropriate image based on is animation count 2, 0, 1, or 2 at that point. And I have an array of three elements, so the positions in the array, of course, are 0, 1, and 2. So let's see, this should start my birds in constant motion because, once again, this is always happening 50 times a second. Animation count 1 is constantly going up. It's going up by 1 each time. It started off at 0 when the game began. Every time the variable reaches a certain number, which we set to be 10 initially, and we can go back and change it pretty easily, what does it do? It sets it back, animation count that variable back to zero. 
So every tenth time right now the draw method is executed, animation count is going to be go from 0 to 10 and then set back to 0. So that's going to happen 5 times a second because that's 10 milliseconds and uh, or every 100 milliseconds essentially. Okay, so now um, every time the animation count goes back to 0, what happens? it increments animation count 2 plus by 1, which started off at 0. Now, animation count 2 is going to cycle between 0, 1, and 2. The instant it reaches 3, it goes back to 0 again. So it may be 3 for an instant, but it's practically really not uh, distinguishable to the computer that it's 3. It happens so fast. And now our draw statements basically draw, pick an, an image, an element of the array of texture 2Ds to draw based on what animation, the value animation count 2 is, which of course cycles between 0, 1, and 2, which by coincidence, well not coincidence, but intentionally are the indices of our array of texture 2D variables. So let's see if this works. Hopefully it will, because I'm doing this. All right, there it does. Yay! Oh, you can't see it because it might be cut off the screen. So let me move my birds a little bit. And you can see that it does. Okay, now the advantage of this is, of using that constant, is that if we want to change the speed of the birds, okay, we can go back up and look at, and you're seeing it behind the scene, look at my recorder. We can go up to where we declare that constant and just change it. If we want it to, the bird, the animation to go faster, if I want it to go twice as fast, I will decrease it to five. Now let's look and see what they are. Okay, I'll move them onto the screen. All right, that looks a little bit better. Okay, now, one nice thing, if the birds are flying, you would kind of want them flapping their wings in place even before the game starts. However, maybe you have, uh, like, uh, animals that don't fly, and you want them to just stand still. Okay, well, I'll show you how to do that, uh, make that happen in the next screencast as well as to flash detect what, when your game has ended and who won and to flash a message and let the user restart the game. So that'll be in the next screencast.